Yeah? yeah? Right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. So, Ash. Yes. We're not supposed to call you... Elena. Heath. Right. Elena but is mispronounced all too often. Elena Heath. You must call her Ash. Yes. You please. work at the office of the TTO yes. at Acquia. Yes. Do you work directly with Dries, for Dries? Yes. I am a direct report to Mr. Dries. And your job is pretty cool. Tell me what you do. So I'm his multimedia designer. I make him look good is how I describe it. I do animated presentations. I do GIFs. I do video demos if we want to show how something works with Drupal. Um, kind of whatever he needs to make him a star if he wasn't already. Which he the is. first time I asked you that question, you told me something like, I take complex concepts mm -hmm. and I render them more understandable. That's also true. I like a like an information translator because a lot of what happens at Acquia is very technical, and I try to make it understandable to any audience. So that's so interesting, and I think yeah. that's a. I, I guess there's a lot of parallels in um, our jobs too. Although I generally try to do that with words mm. written down, spoken, sure. interviews, and so on. I try and. Um, draw analogies, draw parallels, explain, you know, a technical subject in terms of the business value it delivers, right? Mm -hmm. Or, or you know, explain to, in this case, also business people, you know, how and why certain things work in open source. Right. Which is itself a very complex and interesting it world. It totally is. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so we're the explainers. Yes. And, Visual, verbal. Right. Now, had you heard of Drupal or open source before you started here? And how long have you been here? Okay, so I worked with Dries as a contractor for about a year and a half, and then I've been here since May, so I think that's about nine months. Okay, we're in real time, we're talking in January 2016, so you started in May 2015. Yep, officially. For reals. For reals, okay. yeah. I wasn't just the... What's uh, your first... Gun. <laughs> <laughs> what was your first encounter with Drupal? Um, so actually, Drupal, I'd heard of it. I was working at a company in Chicago, and they were considering Drupal for their website, And then we didn't have anybody who knew anything about it. So it was a project manager trying to figure out the back end of Drupal. And we got scared and ran away. But that was what I knew. I knew of Drupal. And I knew there were Drupal developers. And we probably needed one of those. Um, but that was then. And okay. that, that was not my, my uh, responsibility at the time. Did you have any concept of the difference between open source and proprietary software at that point? Mm, not to the extent that I do now. Uh, I think I did somewhat know about what that was, um, but now I really value it and speak about it to anyone who will listen. I think it's really important. Give me your elevator pitch. Oh my gosh. Um, my elevator pitch would just be open source means you don't have to pay for the software and it's free and it is accessible to anyone in the world who wants to use it, which is really empowering when there's a big wealth gap, there's people in developing nations that use it, there are people in first world nations that use it at big, big companies. Um, and I think it's, it's kind of a great equalizer in that way. Um, it's a great tool. So try to spread the word as much as possible. That's a, that's a, that's a pretty good explanation. That, that touches on, on some of the points that are really important to me as well. You know, enabling people to um, build community and to communicate online and, and the fact that your local nonprofit or your local school or your local community Wherever you are, if you can get online, mm -hmm. you can use the same tools as the White House or, yeah. you know, the biggest corporate players. Yeah, I've been amazed to see the brands that use it, small to large. It's it's a lot. It's, it's almost every, like a lot of anything you could think of, there's a good chance they're using open source and Drupal. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Well, if you, if you, if you, if you. Uh, pull out to open source as a whole, yes, mm -hmm. because open source is behind vast swathes of the web. So, yeah. yeah, agreed. So, cast your mind back. Uh, you had just started here, mm -hmm. um, and you got in touch with me at some point um, because DrupalCon Dublin was coming up mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, when was that? October, I guess. 
Yeah, I think late September. Late almost, September. Almost October. Right. Yeah. Um, and you were working with Dries to prepare his keynote address for Drupal Con Dublin, affectionately known as the Dries Note yep. among the community. And what was the concept? What was he going for? So I'd worked on, let's see, three or four Dries Notes before that one when I was a contractor. Um, more, more and more taking on the role of working with him directly before it had been with Kevin O'Leary, who was, uh, I guess his title is Director of Design. He, wor he works more on the Drupal side. Um, so for that, we had done a lot of different things. We try to always change it up and do something different every time, keep the audience intrigued with what Dries will say next. Um, and so for this one, we, we were talking about what would be the most impactful way to spread the message of why, why is Drupal important? And we thought, well, why don't we talk to the community? Because that was the big word I had, I kept hearing community, community, community. Every time I talked to somebody about Drupal or DrupalCon, just like, oh, the amazing community. So I was like, okay, well, why don't we pull from the community and see what they have to say about how it's changed their life? Because Dries, he's great at, he never wants to make it about him. He's like, I don't want to talk about me. I want to talk about what this enables for everybody else. And so he, he thought that was a good idea. And so we decided let's do, let's do some video interviews and see what people have to say. We had no idea what we would get. You know, people could have said, oh, I hate Drupal and I left. But that was not the case. As we didn't saw. call those people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So basically, we ended up getting amazing content from just talking to, and we, we tried to, I think we got someone on almost every continent. So um, uh, I recall that we talked, and we had actually narrowed the concept down a little further okay. while we were talking um, so that it was, let's try and find people whose lives have been changed by Drupal. Yep. Um, I think with the parallel idea of um, some of them were definitely talking about they had contributed yep. to Drupal because it's really important that everybody uh, pulls their weight in the community and that's been a big topic over the last yep. year. Um, so, so I remember both thinking about who's made interesting contributions mm -hmm. uh, like Rakesh James in India mm -hmm. who's trained um, six or nine hundred people in Drupal which is yeah. insane. <laughs> I really honestly have trouble wrapping my head around it. Um, and he's absolutely dedicated to contributing in that way. Yeah. Um, um, so this idea of, of lives being changed and improved by Drupal everywhere and, and this enablement story and like the power of really becoming a part of it through contribution. Yep. And that all came together pretty nicely. So, yep. so we came up with a list of probably, I don't know, 15 or 18 people, made a bunch of calls, sent a bunch of emails around, and we ended up doing... Um, I guess eight or nine interviews, and and um, I could look at my list here. <laughs> Let's see: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. We ended up using seven eight, nine. plus plus. We got some material from the Drupal Apprenticeship Program along yeah. the way. Um, yeah, but for I think another focus was people who found Drupal professionally and then got excited by the community and got involved. Yes, that so was that focus. was right. So we had all these. That's that's exactly now that you mention it. Um, we were pulling together all these threads and there was also the idea that <clears throat> some people, I think, feel that if you don't come from like genuine hobbyists, like mm -hmm. pull yourself up by mm -hmm. the bootstraps, that you can't possibly understand community. Yep. And we know that that's very, very much not the case. There are lots right. of people who've encountered it professionally and become in incredibly passionate about it and really huge contributors as well. So that yep. was, yes, that was the other thing that tied it together. And that came out of the survey from DrupalCon <clears throat> New Orleans. We did a survey in the community and there was a concern around, well, the hobbyists are kind of dying out. Where are we going to find people that are excited about Drupal? And Dries was like, I'm not worried about that at all. Mm. Let's prove it, basically. Okay. And we right. did, I think. Yep. So over the course of a couple of months, uh, Individually and together, yep. we had some just some of the most wonderful sort of interview conversations. Um, and we talked with a bunch of of great people who've done all sorts of different things with Drupal in all sorts of different places. Yeah, and we we really tried to kind of tap into the diversity of the community and get people from all walks of life. Yeah, um, just to show the breadth of the Drupal community in a, in a slice of life. But yeah. yeah. So I'm looking at the list of the people that the 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 
people whose interviews we then took a soundbite out of. Mm -hmm. So the, the Dries note ended up having a section about the community and contribution, and Dries talked what, about what he thought was important. Obviously, a link to the Dries note in the show notes here. Yeah. Um, but then there were all these soundbite videos, a minute long, three minutes long, um, and they were spectacular. They were really, really great. So why don't you talk about talking with Drew Gorton and Ronan Dowling, who built the backup and migrate solution, mm -hmm. which they turned into a company, which was then acquired and then, like obviously transformed their lives as, mm -hmm. as from helping the community to entrepreneurs to, you know. Yeah. One of the themes that we kind of looked at in the Dries note was kind of this expanding, this, this uh, I guess, is it a pebble in a pond, the ripple effect of, you know, it started with Dries inventing Drupal and then he's empowering these people who empower other people and like the influence grows. And I think talking with Drew and Ronan, they really find meaning in how the tool they created enables other people and makes their lives better. And they feel that appreciation from the community. Um, I just know I could see the, the spark in their eye when they talked about it. And that was awesome. Because um, to them, it's that's everything. Just seeing how they can help others, which is so cool. And I think that's at the heart of the community is that help helping other people. Yeah, absolutely, so. absolutely, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> someone else who speaks about the incredible satisfaction of of helping others to 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 do this is is Suchi Garg mm -hmm. in New Delhi. She works for Acquia as well, yeah. um, but she's old school tech. She's been a, a a developer her whole career. She studied computer science, um, and she talked about uh, how how great it was to be able to. They dive into the code and be as geeky as she wants to be yeah. um, and help others along the way. I thought that was, I, I really liked having that conversation with her. And it was nice because she was talking from her living room where I have actually <laughs> sat myself. So that felt nice. Yeah, and she, felt... she discovered it professionally, wasn't it? She was an executive Abs assistant or something and then kind of they needed someone and she just raised her hand and got involved. Um, or or. Or it was, see, this is embarrassing now. Obviously, we'll correct this. But um, I think it was just that, you know, it was one of those places like, here uh, is your next project. Go work with this thing called Drupal, you know. Just have, go. Have a nice day, right? Yeah. So which is, which is the perfect proof point of someone who's wildly passionate about, right. about, about, right. about everything we do now and helping everyone. Coming from a completely cold start, mm -hmm. you know, unprepared for anything sort of position. Yeah. Um, so, Frank from Burkina Faso. Yeah. You called him. What's it, why, oh uh, what's his gosh. surname? I think it's Fra it's uh, some very long name. It was Frank Sarabina something. something something something. Frank, we love you. We'll get this right Frank in the show Sarabina, notes. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Frank's in Burkina Faso. Mm -hmm. And you got him. That on was a amazing. We spoke. He was super excited to talk. I was excited to talk to him. Um, and actually side note this just came up at sales kickoff. Dries was speaking and somebody asked, asked a question. And I was like, Frank is the perfect example for this, that he is fighting poverty in his country with Drupal. The way he sees it, young people are leaving his country because there's not work. There's no way to make money. And he's like, no, we can train them in Drupal. They'll have a way to make money. They can build websites for different businesses. Cause I, even there, you know, there, there's a growing need for that. He's like, if you empower them, it'll change their life. They'll be able to like provide for their families and they won't leave the country. It'll help the country thrive. Like, right. wow. Talk about big mission. Right. Yeah. So I'm I'm completely fascinated by this. The fact that we do something really abstract and we write some characters on a screen and it's just a bunch of numbers and mm -hmm. symbols and letters and stuff, right? But it makes it actually can make the physical real world better. We can really change people's lives. And it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's incredible to think about that. Yeah. Cause they don't have to pay for it. And therefore it's a free tool for them. All they have to do is put the time in to learn and. Yeah, well, boom. right. And then, okay. The fact that it's open source and that, that if you have access to a very basic tool set, uh, you can go wherever you want to go. Yeah. It's, it's pretty, pretty. Stuff. Yeah. His story was really incredible and it just, I think brought that meaning piece in that, I think is fundamental to anywhere that you're working or things you're working on that matter to you. You'll just have that passion. And when you see what it's doing for people in the case of Frank, it's wow. Yeah. 
So, 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 uh, Jofi Mayor from Budapest is an old friend of mine and has been around a long time. And her story, mm-hmm. right, was that she was the, I'm not sure if she started exactly as an assistant or as a project manager yep. at Cheppers in Hungary. And now she's their chief operations officer, right? Mm-hmm. And they're, they're growing and expanding. And, and this has allowed them from Hungary to do business with all of Europe and with the US now. And, and, um, she, didn't come from a technical background, couldn't care less about software, you know, at the start. And now she's, you know, she goes to every Drupal event in Europe practically and she runs sprints and she organized the Iron Camp and organized, you know, uh, any number of events. And that's, of course, that's a huge venue for contribution as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, she was, she, again, I saw that spark in her eye talking about the community and what it's done in her life and how she feels so included and valued in the Drupal community. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, so I spoke with Jack Holding, who works for a nice company called Manifesto in Shoreditch in London. And he's 21, I think, at this point, and came from a background of poverty and, and um, you know, social welfare, essentially, and with very limited prospects, and he dropped out of school mm-hmm. and uh, sort of vaguely... As he told me, he wanted to be a musician, and that didn't work out. And you know, um, he was working at Sports Direct, and he didn't really have any direction. Didn't feel connected to the work. Exactly, so. and so and so in the UK, there's this fascinating program. I really, really think we need to we need to take a better look at it elsewhere because um, the government sponsors apprenticeship programs, mm-hmm. and if you send it up within cer- certain formal guidelines, you can give young people uh, several months of training, and then the whole program, each program has companies that, that participate in it and they commit to taking on then in this case, ju- junior Drupal devs yep. and then training them up and, and getting, you know, value out of them and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. And then we spoke with, or I spoke with the organizers. Sheena in, Morris. Yep. Um, I met her in person and the other one was Crispin, uh, Crispin right? Reed, right? I haven't yeah. met her in person. So the two of them, Sheena runs the the organization that allows for trainings to take place. She doesn't have the Drupal connection, but she saw how that was helping young people and how just that was a skill that was needed. And she was like, how can we make this a thing? Crispin took on writing the curriculum and I think leading some of the trainings or sourcing people in the community, like, hey, who can come help teach? And what they accomplished is great. They've been able to give so many young people a a career path. Yeah, and talking with talking with Jack is really great because he's in person. He's he's actually incredibly shy, Aww. relatively heavily tattooed. Um, and when I recorded him for the for the uh, um, Dries Note interview about his history, you know, he was twenty years old um, and had gone from from you know within just a few years dropping out of school and having very very limited prospects to sort of planning out his whole future. And he'd bought himself a car, and you know Saving he was looking at exactly, and yep. it was just like. Wow. Sort of the ideal empowerment story, right? Yeah, really... and, and and I heard him saying he was he was gonna or he was telling people in his community and friends and family, like it's it, if you're into this, you can do it and kind of giving oh. them that that you can. Like I did it, you can do it. Oh, so so like one of us thing, yeah. like setting an example for me. Yeah. That's really, really cool. That's awesome. Yeah. So then and the last conversation that we used um, in the Dries note was with Vijaya Chandamani yes. from, um, I forget now, he's from Chennai, I think, from South Chennai, India. Chennai, but lives in London. Yes. Yep. And Drupal actually allowed him to move from South India to be a consultant and work with Capgemini in London. And yep. that's a huge change, yeah. right? Oh, you could just, he's, he was a great guy. He was just so happy and <laughs> yeah. just. Um, it, it, he was so, he's, he's so excited about and he's a great contributor. He's a great person. He's just fantastic. But he was so excited when we were talking. And he's he's got a very young daughter. Um, and I think she had just been born when we were talking. And you could hear her off camera. Um, and like, he's so excited about Drupal that I teased him, asking him if he named her <laughs> Drupal, right? Or Drupal? Drupal. Drupal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he's like, my wife would never have let me. <laughs> but yeah. it almost felt like he he, he would consider that. I yeah. thought that was... I, Thank you for, uh, you know, letting me make a joke at your expense. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then uh, I think my favorite was Vladimir, talking with him. Right. 
Vladimir is in, uh, I think he's in Sydney or Brisbane. Yes. He's in Australia. He was my first interview. So I kind of went in blind with, we had a list of questions. Vladimir Rudakov. Yeah. And he runs the Drupal South camps, I believe. Mm -hmm. Um, But he just, he was great to speak with because he was, he was not just a Drupal fanboy. He truly is, he's a skeptic as many people are. And he said, I use it because it's the best tool there is. Hmm. There's nothing that can beat it. Like I wish there was more competition, but there isn't. And I feel like it was, it was in its own way, the best review possible coming from somebody who isn't just going to give a good review to give a good review. That's a powerful statement. Yeah. Right? From, from, from the, from exactly, as you said, from a non fanboy standpoint, yep. uh, like I'd use anything if it would do the job and here I am yep. using it. That's, that's a very good point. Um, and, Vlad and, and I did an interview about Drupal South as well. That's mm, in the podcast archive. Yeah. You know how he got started in Drupal. I think he did tell the story, right? He, yeah, was, he was he was literally working in a basement for somebody who said, um, "I've got transfer all these 150 sites. sites. Go deal with them." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it was a mix like of fun. different Drupal versions and different states of health. And then he's like thrown off the deep end. Mm-hmm. And and I don't know. I think I would have hated Drupal if that were my first experience with it, like maintaining a ridiculous number of <laughs> of 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 uh, you know questionably maintained sites all yeah. at once. Yeah. Oh, and I, I remembered it. So it was that he he had something to say as a skeptic to other skeptics where he said a lot of people before Drupal 8 was released were, you know, oh, it just doesn't work. It's slow. It's not fast enough. Like, what's happening? And he was like, when was the last time you ran a site on Drupal 8? Like, it works. It works really well. So awesome. I believe him. Okay. I believe him because, like I said. So here's the plan, Ash. I've collected all of the raw video from uh, our calls and conversations with these people. And there were wonderful little snippets and sound bites used in the Dries notes. Um, and I'm going to repackage all of this into several podcasts. Mm-hmm. So we'll be able to see and hear a lot more of the conversation with each of these people. Um, and, and I just thought it would be a great idea to put all of this in context, kind of put a frame around it. Um, so whenever this is released, then I wanted to call it What's in a Dries note, I think, or, you know, the making of a Dries note. Yeah. So uh, I'm really, really looking forward to rerunning all these things and, and yeah. cutting them together because it was, uh, you know, it was a good time, actually, uh, uh, preparing everything I ha- else I had to do in Dublin. But but this was uh, was definitely a highlight for me mm-hmm. last year. Yeah, it was really enlightening and, and inspiring. I wish we could do it for every Dries note, right. you know. We could find an excuse <laughs> to do it every, every now and then. Though, every right? other year. Yeah. So the other kind of cool, interesting thing is that in the next few podcasts, um, the interviewer won't just be me. So Ash has is, Ash is run a few of those conversations yeah. and, uh, and she'll be on there. So thank you so much yeah, totally. for My pleasure. Um, you know, your help and for like letting me be part of that project and, uh, and, you know, see you in a podcast somewhere soon. I will. And at DrupalCon. I think I'll be at the next one. So oh, I'll all right. Yep. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> How can we phrase that? Gingers shouldn't date other gingers. Hmm, okay. Can't do it. And what 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 hap- what is that? Is it like is it like crossing the streams in Ghostbusters? <laughs> I mean you could say that. Huh. It doesn't work. All right. Okay. Well, I'm, I mean, okay. Learn something new every day. I don't know how I feel about this, but <laughs> I have learned something. <laughs>